Hello and welcome back to Lorbeck. I'm your host Harry and today I'm going to be driving this rocket ship of a McLaren 650S Spider. These things are so ridiculously quick. The boost keeps you in the back. Wow, it's honestly just relentless power. Unlike anything I've ever driven before. Now, as you guys might have seen recently, Sam actually did do a review on the 650S Coupe, but when I saw that we've brought the Spider into stock, I thought it would be a great idea to give you guys my perspective on the car and to also show you through some of the little differences between the two cars. What makes the McLaren different from other convertibles like the Ferrari 488 Spider is thanks to the toughness of its carbon fiber tub that the car is built around. Now, this means that McLaren didn't have to add any additional strengthening and it's just as rigid and stiff as its coupe counterpart. So with the hard top folding mechanism, you're only adding 40 kilograms to the total weight of the car. So the 650S is McLaren's second mass produced road car that's designed for the public after the MP412C and of course the McLaren P1, which was a very limited run car. Now McLaren took everything that they had learned from both of those cars and jammed it into this. If we come around to the back of the car, you'll notice that they actually haven't really changed anything visually compared to the MP412C other than a slightly more aggressive rear diffuser which is uh, very much F1 inspired and to be fair for a road car uh, it's one of the more aggressive ones I've seen. Now if we come back around to the front visually the side of the car is also very similar. Um, we've got some awesome carbon fiber side pods. Now the front is where the car becomes a lot more P1 inspired. The lights in the McLaren logos and the way that the front dips down into the splitter is very much P1 inspired and uh, that's the way that you can tell that this is a 650S and not the previous car. All right guys, so let's jump in the car. Now, oh, obviously the combination of being a spider and having these awesome butterfly doors make it super easy to jump into the tub. Now this car is spec'd out in complete leather, which is pretty cool. The Alcantara I would say is probably more suited for a coupe, this being more of a roadster. Um, I think the leather everywhere suits it quite nicely along with the red accents to go with that as well. Carbon fiber everywhere, obviously, um, being a McLaren steering wheel, center console piece, um, it all just looks pretty fantastic. All right, so foot on the brake and let's let it roar to life. like to drive? Well, from all the stories that you hear about McLarens, you know, not having the best build quality or reliability, obviously I would need to spend a little bit more time with the car to make a proper assessment, but so far the car feels very well put together. So far, you know, haven't had any catastrophic failures, there's no warning lights, there's no beeping or any strange noises coming from the car. Um, everything seems to be working as it should, which I'm glad because it is the one mute point for a McLaren. And they do say that one in every three or four will be a lemon, but from what I can tell, you know, this one seems to be <laughs> performing fantastically. And these things are so ridiculously quick. It's unlike anything I've ever driven before. The way the turbos spool up um, and the boost kicks you in the back, it's really an incredible feeling. Because of the carbon fiber tub, the car is taut and rigid. And it's really hard to describe the way the car communicates the road through the chassis. It's honestly just relentless power and the transmission as well is rapid. It's like using a semi-automatic machine gun going up and down through the gears. The brakes as well is uh, 
completely different ball game from your regular German sports cars like the M4 that I reviewed last week. The brake pedal is solid. You actually have to use a fair bit of grunt to use all of that braking performance. A really cool thing I want to tell you about as well is the active aero on the car. So when you slam on the brakes, the air wing pops straight up to help slow the car down and you can actually feel it working. When driving around some tighter side streets and just giving it a little bit of throttle, it's really cool to hear through these air intakes that are right over your shoulder, the turbos spool up and then have that blow off sound. It's uh, an incredible piece of machinery. I honestly am super surprised that the car really feels as one. Um, I was expecting it to shutter and rattle and honestly just feel like a little bit of a mess. But it's really not the case. I think McLaren really did learn from their mistakes with the 12C and you can tell that they've really improved this car dramatically over that first production car. Now, being that this is a British car, there are a few little quirky things about the interior, like the seat controls being completely under the front of the seat. So the <laughs> very difficult uh, to work out what you're doing if you're just stepping into the car. And likewise with the climate control buttons, they're actually mounted up on the door where I think that's where they probably should have put the seat controls. Um, the touch screen is near unusable, like with the backup camera, but look, it's, it's not a brand new car. Um, you're not buying this for these things. If you want that kind of stuff, you know, you can go buy a base BMW 3 Series and, you know, Bob's your uncle. All right, guys, so, clear way on there. Wow. The 3.8 litre V8 in this is one of the most relentless pulling engines I've ever experienced. Oh, wow. Mind bogglingly quick. Another really cool thing that I haven't seen any other manufacturer do is have ambidextrous paddle shifters. So what that means is you can be sitting relaxing on the freeway with one hand on the steering wheel and the paddles are actually on a rocker so you can push away on the upshift paddle to downshift and then use the exact same hand to push and pull to row through the gears which is really really cool thank you so much for watching this week's friday drive i hope you enjoyed the mclaren as much as i have and with that i will see you guys in the next video um this car is specked out oh i got in my eye oh <laughs>